Hey everyone, it's Eric here from Lapfix. Got another video for you guys today. We got this A1706. It's a little bit of an older model. Still nice though. Got the space gray, got the USB C ports. Uh, it's in here for uh, no power, right? It's in one of these melons. You guys love melon and your devices to us, and we love receiving them to fix them. And then we also do data recovery services. So we're located in the Northern Virginia area, right outside of DC. So we get a lot of these to come in, and we got one of these in here for um, repair today, right? So I guess. Really, let's go into it. Let's actually see what's going on. I know this is an Intel model, so it's right at the cusp of right where they started going with the space gray color with the USB-C ports. And um, they have more stuff integrated now than ever because I think they just only had the SSD, which was the one thing that wasn't there. RAM was so integrated, everything else was. But when your computer isn't working, risk the data, right, on top of that too. So this one doesn't have a security chip, so it's not one of those ones where you need to possibly reflash it to, um, to get it to work again, there's there's nothing there like that. So it's that one model right before that. So, and actually I think they stopped taking updates now. So it actually is getting along the older side, but someone still wants it to, to work, right? So we're gonna go ahead and work with it. So let's see, we plug it in, we get about 20 volts. Okay, that's not too bad. About 6.4, 6.76, does it turn on? We get something? Nope. No chime, nothing. Usually you can tell if it is, if there's like a no display or no backlight. You can put a flashlight up to it, you can see if it's gonna work, or you can see for the caps light, the caps light isn't coming on. So this thing's completely dead, and there's no chime, there's nothing there. That's very strange. So you got 20 volts of almost two amps, which looks like it's powering on. That's a good voltage, it's like, it looks normal. All right, but it's just not powering on. So let's go ahead, I think we're gonna go ahead and need to open it up, take a look at it, and see what's going on from there. So let's get right into that. So let's go ahead and open it up. And we see, this looks like this has been open and, and possibly worked on before because we can see that the, the battery usually has like a little covering that goes over there um, and usually a lot of the glue, or at least when you have cables down, they're a little bit neater, a little bit nicer. There's more coverings or stuff on there. And we also see that there is this white writing here. And it looks like it is just maybe another shop that did that. Maybe this is a refurbished board, maybe they worked on it. Um, we can also see it looks like a little bit of evidence here I'll go under the microscope, probably look at it a little bit better, but maybe there was some type of liquid damage or flux or something there. That's, that's never a good sign, especially when you see something like this. And it makes a little bit more sense um, when, when you plug it in. Let's just at least disconnect the battery and uh, see if anything changes to that. So we're just gonna disconnect that real quick. Here, so we take out the board. And let's just check our voltages real quick. About 0.05 amps. So that is a little bit different than when we had plugged in as well as everything plugged in, right? Especially the battery, because the battery was showing almost two amps there. This one should turn on without a battery, so it shouldn't really matter too much. You still will get your amps will be a little bit different because the current won't be the same if you have a battery plugged in versus not having it plugged in, but it shouldn't be this low. It should probably be a little bit higher, maybe like 0 0.7, 0 0.8 with it powering on. Um, let's go ahead on the thermal cam. Let's check real quick on that and see what we see from there and then we'll go under the microscope. So we plug it in and we get one of our C32 is getting warm, which is normal. C32 is part of the USB-C circuit that, that does uh, power data there. So we see that that's normal. It's usually when you plug it in, you'll see that just normally. Um, and let's check the rest of the board, see if we notice anything else. So it looks like there is something actually on this side that's sticking out and we want to focus on. So let's go under the microscope and uh, take a look, see if there's anything else that, that we notice that's really obvious. So if we look here, we can see that these areas are usually pretty concerning because you don't know what happened here. Was it a cleaned? Was something replaced? Was anything worked on? It looks like something was obviously there, maybe like a type of liquid damage or something else like that. So that's why. As you can tell, maybe it's been cleaned, maybe there's corrosion there, they cleaned it, you don't know. Was something replaced? You don't know. And it just leaves a lot of questions, right? So if we do any type of repairs, this makes it more difficult because the port's interconnected to everything. RAM, CPU processor, everything's there. This one, thankfully, doesn't have a, a, a security chip on there, so that's a big relief. But we never want to see something like this because you just don't know what happened, what someone worked on. Did they replace the board? Is this a good board? When you fix the board, is the activation lock because they replaced the board? And what if the customer is missing the data? You don't know. So that's why usually we have a policy we don't like working on things we've previously worked on. But uh, let's see, let's keep uh, looking at that. Yeah, this is just a normal burn. Looks like something happened to it. But the, the thing is too, it's really close to where the processor is and GPU and stuff there. It's not a good thing. 
So that's the one thing, because the heat sink is, what you see this little metal piece, that's part of the heat sink that goes in the other side, so you don't want any other short or main impact processor there. So we have a board view of this board. Uh, it's an older board, so there's a lot of information available about it. Um, we have this main component, that's where it is, so on the other side is where the processor and GPU are, so it's right close to where the other side is. We got our PV3V3 S5 rail here, and PM SLP S5L, and this is the main component. So we're just going to go ahead and swap that out. Um, should have another one of those here, and we'll do that and just replace it and then um, see if it works from there because we didn't see any other type of damage. When you go flip it back on the other side, this is where some of the liquid damage was. This is your main uh, trackpad connection, which is the J4501, and then you have your keyboard connection too, which is J4500, and then you have everything probably along those um, areas, or it could be something else, right? Because that's why you have this on the board. But this is main, so if we go over here, we'll see, we'll see fan connection, because the fan is part of the keyboard. The keyboard connects to the fan. The fan connects to the keyboard, so you're gonna have connections there that are very similar. So you see KVD, which is keyboard, then you'll see fan. Um, that area, and this, this is your main trackpad that connects everything else there. So usually you have to have I see T-pad fuse. Um, you have all the other stuff there, so everything else is connected to that. But this area was a little bit liquid spill, maybe, or or cleaned. And we also see our main rail close to that is a PV bus G3 hot, which is the main for any type of MacBook. If you've done any, if you've seen any videos before, they usually talk about that as one of the biggest things. Is that so there was liquid spill probably around that, maybe that was reflowed or replaced, and then they didn't look at the other side of the board. By looking at something like this, most likely what probably happened is um, someone just locally cleaned the board, um, marked it, and then they didn't flip it to the other side and see the burn, or they just didn't care, or they're very lazy, or something. I don't know. It's always it's hard to say. You don't know. So you have to hope this rail works. Most likely, based on the symptoms that we're seeing, if we just do a replacement of, of the burned area, Hopefully the short should be gone and we should get a display because we're getting normal voltages with the battery plugged in. Um, but if you don't have your PB3, V3, S5, or if you just have a burn, that's there. The main if you don't if you have a burn on the PB if you have a burn on the board, it's gonna cause a problem anyway. It's not gonna power on, not show display, especially on PB3, V3, S5. So let's go ahead and replace that and then uh, see what happens after that. See that? Yep, burn. Put down the machine. Why this thing shut down? No signal. Look at that. Let's go ahead and plug it in now and see what our voltages are and everything. See, everything else will be fine. I would assume it would this time. We got 5 volts, 20 volts. So good, we got 20 volts and we got about 0 0.8, 0 0.9. So, like I was saying before, usually you get about 0 0.7 or so. The processor is getting pretty warm, so we're getting 0.92 and we were getting 0.05 before. So, I'm going to plug that because the fan isn't running and the processor is getting pretty warm. So, we don't have our main short anymore. Um, I'm curious though about uh, the keyboard and trackpad because it looks like there was some type of work or at least cleaning done around this area. So let's plug it in, let's make sure everything does work. I'll put it all back and we'll go from there. Okay, so we have it all plugged back. So let's go ahead and um, 
C. It's going to turn off. It should. It looks like it is. Both just look okay. But it did last time too. So you never know. And then we have to hope keyboard mouse is really working. So power it up. Plug it in. And we get an Apple logo. So looks to be good. Let's also make sure that the, the trackpad is clicking. And then we have the name. So we're able to just log these things. It looks like it is powering on fine. Looks like uh, it is charging up. Um, and those of you guys can see, I'll try to get this to the trackpad. I'll go along the blue corner right here. Okay, so there, I don't know if you guys can see it. It is there, I gotta blur out the name for the customer privacy, but that looks to be good. And let's also try to type. Okay, okay. and we can type too, because that was a concern, especially if there's any type of cleaning or work done around that area. I'd give a problem, but it looks to be good, so it was just mainly that. And who knows what happened from before. We'll double check everything else, make sure everything looks to be good. We'll do um, multiple tests on it. And then we have to find some screws. I think there are some screws for the heat sink that were actually uh, missing there, like in the corner. So we'll go look, locate those. But that's dangerous too, because you don't want to have the heat sink lifted or not being put uh, cooled properly because that's what the fans are. If you have a heat sink that's lifted like that, that's not good because the fans are here to pushing our air to it. And um, you need to cool the processor and GPU correctly. And and then we'll leave that just there. So everything looks to be good and uh, we'll continue testing it, but that should be about it. So anyways guys, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video on fixing the A1706. It's a little bit older model, but still relevant. MacBook Pro, it's a 2017 model. This one doesn't have a security chip on there, so there wasn't a concern for that, especially for any type of data. Um, normally for this one, uh, you don't have any firmware to worry about because if you check out our other videos on the newer models, especially the ones that have the Apple Silicon, you have to worry about uh, security to this built into the processor itself so it makes the uh, data recovery a lot more difficult um, for that and especially if there's a firmware and even just doing repairs it makes it a lot more difficult in general for that so as you can see when you have any other type of work or anything that's been worked on before there's always a big concern for that because you don't know what happened is it a refurbished board has stuff been replaced um, what has actually been worked on, um, especially if it's been cleaned up well, if you're not sure. We can see that there looks to be something, maybe that's been cleaned up in the area, maybe a little bit of flux there. And we saw the one component was part of the main power rail, which is the G3 hot, but it's right next to where the trackpad and the keyboard connection go. We're gonna make sure we test it to make sure there's no other issues, but it's always a concern because we weren't the first ones in there to do the work and to see the damage and to work on stuff like that. If there was um, any type of damage and um, someone does like a type of cleaning on it and they don't know what they're doing, they're not using a microscope, um, you, it's very easy to knock components, especially if there's any type of liquid or corrosion there because um, what the liquid's gonna do is gonna corrode and then the solder is gonna get extremely weak and it can be hanging on by maybe a thread and maybe a brush or something a little bit more aggressive can knock those components. You can rip traces, you can do a lot of things and then you need to know exactly which components were there. You're gonna have to have well, board view schematics. It makes um, repair is a lot more difficult and in some cases right for data recovery especially on these ones how everything's integrated to the board like ram cpu everything is there um it makes it more difficult you can risk your day you don't want to do that so we always recommend not doing something like that if you can especially for liquid spill it doesn't matter how small or the, the damage can be it can affect a lot of other parts of the board there you can give you can make a lot more damage you can make stuff worse so um, we take data recovery very seriously because we are a data recovery center. So we just recommend please not to do that, uh, especially for any type of MacBooks in general, but especially if you're interested in data, just in general, just for that. Um, so hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you guys did, please leave a like, really this helps a lot. Subscribe for more content. It's actually nice, I think the sun just came out. Oh, it's really nice, it's like 60 degrees right now. It was really cool yesterday. It was almost like, it was in the low 30s yesterday. Um, you know, holiday season is coming around. So hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Enjoy your holidays and we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching guys. Take care. Bye.